Hello everybody and welcome back to Nervous Reviews. Today we're going to be doing the spoiler filled review of Red Seas Under Red Skies. Click off now if you haven't read the book. Now even though this is a spoiler review, um, I have a small problem in that I can't remember a couple things from this book. Now this is standard, right? This is a very standard thing for me to do. Before the review I usually look up the character names and such, but for this book I couldn't care less. And that is because none of these characters appear later on. Like this is such a out of the blue version of this. Everything is out of the blue. Um, nothing really continues into the third book. This is such a one shot that it is staggering. Like this is such, this is so out of place. And, and I think that you guys know that if you've read this book, because other than a couple flashbacks going back to uh, certain parts that are somewhat tangentially related, you know, like the, the parts where they're doing the small cons, like uh, the chair thing was particularly interesting. Other than those where we kind of get a glimpse into Logan Lamora's past, this, this really doesn't have anything related to what they did before. And I think that that was quite disappointing because there's a certain type of thing that I buy into when you read a fantasy series. I think that this is a pretty standard thing. And that standard thing is this will be a part of a broader series, of a broader narrative, if nothing else. Sanderson does this particularly well. It, it's very good for a series to be able to connect to its previous stories by building off of what was in the past, and then also build forward into future stories, setting up many things that will occur in the future. Now, having read the previous book and the after book, um, there's nothing related to anything. You could basically skip this book and nothing would happen in hand. It is particularly bad because of that reason. Because maybe that could have been acceptable, right? If this was a great book where the Red Seas under Red Skies, like, oh yeah, pirates. If that was interesting, then I would have been totally cool with this because, you know, it's pirates and pirates have a lot of ability and like a lot of really interesting stories going along with them. But when you have pirates that are basically doing nothing, like we have that ringleader, right? Like that lady um, who's supposed to be like the anti-pirate, like they're actually good people. They're not actually bad people and, and they bring their children up to sea because they're good people. You take away from a lot of what is fun in a pirate. When you kind of put upside down the idea of a pirate and you make them all generally decent people, it's, it doesn't really end up being a pirate story. It ends up being a sailor story. And that's essentially what this was. Um, even still, the fact that Locke and Jean were, were captains for like a little bit, like Locke was a captain for a little bit, that was so stupid because he was captain for like 10 minutes and then he got like overthrown. And after that, he wasn't a captain. He just had to effectively, like, I, I know I'm skipping a lot over the story here, but giving away, uh, but when he gives away all the secrets of what he's doing and why he's doing it, it's so pathetic. It's am amazingly pathetic. Because when you have a story built on these liars, these thieves, and you just have them give away all their secrets to people that are generally good, and they just end up doing the same thing anyway, it just becomes such a stupid story where there's certain great stories that you expect from Locke and Jean. You expect certain things to like go their way. Like you expect everything to be against them and they kind of push through and solve things anyway. And they don't really get help from other people. That tends not to be what they do. And uh, it's okay if they get some help, but this was basically entirely carried by that female pirate character. Like, that was crazy. Like, the, the extent by, to which she was a main character without a point of view was astounding. And while the world building was good, as you might have seen in my spoiler-free review, if you can click on the link in the description, I thought that when they finally landed and they were doing this thing with the council and it's like the group of pirates, um, it was like incredibly odd. Because while I didn't pay attention to it very much because it was just so out of left field, it was uh, people, it, it, okay, so they'd gotten to a place after they'd gotten to that specific council place, after telling the lady all that they needed to know, and then they go there and they try to do this one thing. It's just so astounding to me that this was even included because what is spoken about there is so irrelevant, right? Like it's only there for like the last third of the book and it doesn't really have a huge impact. It's a mild impact, but not huge. And the fact that I didn't understand what was going on basically didn't matter because even the fact that I barely understood what was going on, nothing changed for me after that. Like I, I basically still understood what was going on very easily. And the fact that they were coming back and they were trying to do this con and, and like uh, trying to take over the, 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 take over the person to poison them, all these things just kind of felt stupid. Because when you have a story where Locke and John basically have no effect, you could have switched anyone out for these people and it would have worked out. Like there's no reason for these two to be here. There's nothing they really did at all. All they did was tell the truth and then they just got where they needed to go. And so it's, it's kind of frustrating for me to review this because I, I, I really wanted to like it. Like, I really wanted to like it. I've always wanted to read a really good pirate story, but I can never find a good one. Anyone who's watching this, if, if you know a good pirate story, recommend it. And I, I'd love to read that because I'm looking for one and I can't find one anywhere. But I do have to be honest and kind of say that the rest of the world building is somewhat interesting. 
the, the tidbits that are included about the ma magi, the, the idea of like this huge bureaucracy above the entirety of the city and, and the people that are truly in control, that's incredibly fascinating too. And so again, credit where credit is due, this is a very reasonably uh, well-defined world building. I'm not particularly better than any other story, but it certainly fits every criteria that I would have wanted in a world building story. One thing that I didn't mention in the spoiler free section, but I will mention here because it is a little bit more relevant here, is that every time they went back in time to a flashback, it became increasingly difficult to figure out what, when, when these stories take place. Because in many other cases, when we kind of, uh, in the previous book and the next book, when we kind of jump, jump back in time, it's very clear what the distinction is. We kind of go to a different place doing a different thing to things that are completely irrelevant compared to what is going on around them, right? When you jump back in the previous book to Locke and John's childhood, you see a lot of things that is very obviously their childhood. Here, they kind of flash back to their own adulthood. And so because of that, it does get pretty confusing, especially when the, during the chair making things, because I could not for the life of me figure out what was going on there um, until, until the end when I finally figured out, oh, like it's, it's, it's a flashback to then. Oh, that makes sense because like, okay, they use it here and, they, and then everything works out, right? Because they're using the chair for the final original giant plot that they were aiming for. While it was interesting and while I actually enjoyed those parts, it became increasingly confusing because the story, it was simply not written well-defined enough for me to understand where we were in the time. So when I think about reviewing the story, um, when I think about actually rating it a five-star rating, I, I try to decide around the two, two mark uh, because two is what I would say average. The average book is two stars for me. And uh, some people will say, oh, that's too low, but I don't care. Right? Unless I'm reading it, unless I'm talking about like a tiny little book that only five people have reviewed, I don't care, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick with that. Two is the average book. This was not even average. This actually went way below my expectations because my expectations were that it would be a three at least. And it ended up not even being a three. And it ended up being a two. And, and even as a functional, ba barely functional book, I would not have recommended this. If this was on its own, I would never have recommended this to any friends. And so I need to even dock it lower because when I, what I expected out of this book was a decent book. At the very least, that, that's what I wanted. Like a, a functional book where Locke and John get into a problem and they need to solve all the problems and they need to come out the other end. Um, but what ends up happening is that Locke and John get into a problem. Great. Now what? Now nothing. The whole middle of the book was, has nothing to do with them, effectively. Pretty much, it has nothing to do with them. And by the end, they gain some autonomy and they, they do some interesting things. And man, Locke, Locke gets poisoned. Like, that's pretty interesting. That was a great way to transition to the next book. But too little, too late. Right, too little too late as, as much as that is a fun thing overall the fact that there's no middle autonomy makes it a one star all in all so yeah one star it is um unfortunately this is how it goes however rest assured the next book is way better like way better way way, way. like it exceeded my expectations in every way so stay tuned for that thank you to everybody who's liked and subscribed on my previous video the spoiler free red seas under red skies review as well as the previous video before that turncoat by dresden files uh, those were a lot of fun to make and thank you very much to those uh, please let me know what you thought about this book in the comments down below whether you thought that it was actually the same as what i thought you know incredibly underwhelming or as many people i've seen who put it they think they think that this is in the upper echelon uh, with the first book and the second book way above the third book which is incredibly surprising to me but i would love to hear your opinion and whether you think i'm wrong or not so thank you very much for watching this video and i'll see you next time bye